Hello, my fabulous fifth graders. Today's lesson is on rounding decimals. Our I can statement today is, I can round decimals to any place. In our first example here, Andrew's laptop has a processor with a speed of 2 and 8 tenths gigahertz. We're going to round this processing speed of the laptop to the nearest whole number. Remember that our I can statement was that I can round decimals to any place. That means we may be rounding to whole numbers, we may be rounding to decimal numbers, we have to really make sure we know which place value we are rounding to. Today we are rounding to the nearest whole number or ones place. Now if I look at 2 and 8 tenths gigahertz, I can say, well, that number is bigger than 2 and smaller than 3. I'm going to use a number line to help me round. They've given me a number line, and they've marked 2 and 3. So we're going to draw 10 equal increments between 2 and 3 on the number line. Why 10? Well, because we have a base 10 number system, and this is 8 tenths. That means 8 out of 10 equal increments between 2 and 3. Here's my trick for drawing 10 equal increments. I'm gonna mark my half first. And I know I should have five over here and five over here. So now I can just one, two, three, four. This half mark makes five. And then I add one, two, three, four. This whole three would make my next five. Now I have 10 equal increments. That's an easy way for me. Now I can mark 2 and 8 tenths. Here is 2. This would be 2 and 1 tenth, 2 and 2 tenths, 2 and 3 tenths, 2 and 4 tenths, 2 and 5 tenths, 2 and 6 tenths, 2 and 7 tenths, 2 and 8 tenths. This is 2 and 8 tenths. Now I have to determine is this place on the number line closer to 2 or closer to 3? 2 and 8 tenths is definitely closer to 3. So I would round 2 and 8 tenths to 3. Let's try rounding another way. This is a way that you can round without a number line. Though it really makes sense still with a number line. Let's take a look. So I've got 46 and 73 hundredths, and I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. Well, I know that this is going to be somewhere in between 46 and 7 tenths, and 46 and 8 tenths. And I'm going to, again, mark 10 equal increments on this number line. And 46 and 73 hundredths would be right here. 46 and 73 hundredths. So I can do that also by underlining the digit in the tenths place. That would be my 7. Then my next step is to look to the number to the right. This is the 3. And think, hmm, is that less than 5 or greater than 5? 3 is less than 5. If it's less than 5, then we'll keep the underlined digit, that would be a 7, and drop all the digits to its right. So 46 and 73 hundredths would round to 46 and 7 tenths. But if we check our number line, you can see here why 
we have a rule of if it's less than five, we round down. And if it's greater than five, we would round up. If it's less than five, it's greater, it's closer to this number on the number line. And when it's greater than five, it would be closer to this number on the number line. So both the number line and this strategy really lead us to the same place for the same reasons. Here is an example for you to try on your own. You're going to round 8 and 74 hundredths to the nearest 1. They give you some clues here, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with in class. That brings us to the end of today's lesson. Our lesson was on rounding decimals. We talked about how to round decimals with a number line and how to round decimals by checking to see if the number to the right of our rounding place is greater than or less than five. I can't wait till class tomorrow. You can tell me which strategy you like best.